Hello, everybody. I'm Nina Soden, urban fantasy author of the Sector C series and the Blood Angel series. And today I am so excited to have Shannon work here with me. She is a first time author and we're going to dive deep into her process, her book and everything about her. But before we begin, this is the time where I ask you to give us a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. We will be doing a giveaway of Shannon's book. So this video is going to post on December 4th and the giveaway will be drawn on December 11th. So if you want a chance to win a signed autographed copy of Shannon's book, please go ahead and click that like button. All right, Shannon work grew up in Del Rio, a border town in the dusty winds of West Texas. Summers were spent on the ranch with her grandparents. When she graduated from high school, she moved east to College Station and earned a Bachelor's of Arts in Journalism and a Master's in Land Economics from Texas A&M University. It was at A&M that she met an offensive lineman on the football team who swept her off her feet and taught her how to love football. Most of her working life has been spent developing real estate and earning a National Best in American Living Award for one of her developments. After two failed starts at writing a novel she and raising three kids and working, she retired to pursue her dream of writing mystery novels full time. That is the dream to actually be able to retire and write full time. I know. Wow. So how did that feel to know that you could just stop it all and just pursue your dreams? It was um, a lot of fun because I figured out a while that, um, that I wasn't going to be able to do it working and with kids because I had started twice and it was unfortunately it was historical fiction, which I love to read historical fiction, but I'm also a big history buff. So anytime I came across a primary source I thought I needed, I would go buy it and then I would be, I mean, I've read about the Texas Revolution, the Texas Rangers, the Mexican Revolution, and I got no writing done. So I abandoned the first couple projects over the years, many years back, and then decided about two years ago that, okay, you know, I was staring being an empty nester Staring at that and going, okay, here it comes. And so I decided, well, it's time, it's now or never. So I started uh, writing the book about two years ago. I didn't tell anybody what I was doing because I had two failed starts. I'm like, okay, I'm not gonna announce that I'm doing this and, uh, and it not come out again. So my husband didn't know what I was doing until I was about halfway done with the first draft. Okay. And which was, gosh, probably almost a year in to the process. Okay. And I kept it a secret. And then my kids didn't know until I was completely finished. And they were surprised. Were they blown away that they, mom had written and published a book? They were. They were because they had no clue. My youngest was still at home. And uh, I know when he was coming in the door after school and I would slowly close my laptop. just So he had no <laughs> idea what I was working on. So they were, they were, they were blown away when they, when they uh, found out about it. So it's been a lot of fun. A lot so, of fun. What was that feeling when your book came and you got to hold it for the very first time? That was very exciting. I've got it here. That, it's a I, beautiful that, cover. Thank you. I was so happy with the way the cover turned out. Very mysterious for a mis traditional mystery. Yeah. But um, it was a lot of fun. Definitely a dream come true after all these years of starting and stopping and not getting anything done. So yeah. it was fun. A lot of fun. So who designed the cover? Um, Demonza from, it's a company out of New Zealand. And I have seen a couple other authors that I read that have used Demonza in, mm -hmm. um, on their covers and really liked them. So, so are you a traditionally published author or are you an indie author? I'm an indie author. And what made Indeed. you go that route and would you do it again? I think, yes, absolutely. I think that um, the stories that I had read about people that were traditionally published that ended up going indie and being happy with it and also being very impatient that I just, you know, I had finally gotten this story done after all these years, I've gotten one done. So I wasn't really interested in spending, a, you know, a year trying to find an agent, another year trying to find somebody, maybe hopefully buy it. 
Yep. And then, you know, I got maybe one or two copies and a handful of bookshelves on the back of the, you know, in the bookstores on the back of the shelf somewhere for six months. And then my book's gone and somebody else is in. Yep. And having a business background, um, you know, with my real estate development company, I wasn't scared of the business side of it. I actually liked it. I've done marketing and, and stuff like that in the past. So that was a good fit. So it really wasn't much of a question for me. So a lot of the indie authors, and I'm an indie author, author as well, so a lot mm -hmm. of the indie authors that I talk to say that the hardest part is the marketing. So right. with that background, what have you found is the easiest way to market your books and actually get it into the hands of readers? Um, I have found that I started uh, before, well beforehand, before when uh, the manuscript was finished, and I did have it professionally edited a couple times, and when that process was going on is really when I kicked in gear trying to do the research on how to market the book. And that's when I set up the, um, I've got an author page on Facebook and um, I did uh, some marketing to try to get some people to find, find me on Facebook. And of course my friends were the first ones to sign up when they right. found out what I was doing. But that, and then also um, just studying how to advertise and get the word out there because if people don't know about the book, nobody's gonna buy the book. So yeah. so it's really trying to figure out who the target market was. And um, I feel like my book is very comparable to Mary Higgins Clark. Oh, and, okay. uh, and so I kind of looked at her, the demographic. Yeah. And so that's kind of how I, found out who I needed in market too, because I feel like if they like her book, then they'll like, good chance they'll like my book. And how was your launch? Um, very probably uneventful. I just, um, I actually had the book done ahead of time, but I held off on publishing it because I'm a huge Agatha Christie fanatic. And I wanted to publish it. I was so close to her birthday that I actually held off. I published it on September 15th, which is Agatha Christie's birthday. And I was wow. so excited about that. I know that so sounds so geeky. No, but, um, I think that's awesome. That was that was so much fun. But um, really, I let people on the Facebook page know and on my personal page and my friends and family. By then, everybody knew what I had done when I was finished. I wasn't, you know, scared to tell anybody about what right. I was working on. So everybody knew kind of that it was coming out and um, it did that. And then in the first week, started doing a little bit of advertising for it just so that people on Facebook and um Amazon would, would see it if they were interested in that type of, hopefully if they were interested in that type of story. Yeah. Okay. So now I see you. What is it? Where did that story come from? Just give us the elevator pitch. Okay. It is a story about Georgia Glass. She is an investigative reporter in Denver, and she is on her way to a bigger and better job in Los Angeles when she inherits this house from a mysterious uncle she never knew. And it's in Aspen. So she's not sure if she wants to keep it or not. So she goes to Aspen. She's going to spend some time there and ends up finding a dead body on the property of a missing heiress that had been missing. And um, so really the investigative reporter in her kicks in and she helps the police uh, track down the killer and um, hopefully before she becomes the next victim because she does kind of get in on his site when he figures out that she's investigating this. So, so it's suspense. suspense. Thriller suspense. Okay. Yes. And now is this one historical or no? No. Because um, I realized with my first couple attempts that if I was doing any historical research that I was just going to get lost in it so yeah. it's a contemporary and it's in aspen it was a lot of fun uh to place a mystery there and um my husband and i spent a lot of time and our family spent a lot of time in colorado so we know colorado and the rockies so so that's where it is so okay so how have you found writing during quarantine has it affected your writing at all has it made it easier harder you know it's so funny i'm such a homebody my family would and friends would completely agree that it wasn't um, that big of a change for me. Okay. So, so I, I did okay through it. You know, it was nice when things started opening back up. We could get out. I was getting a little bit homebound, but yeah. um, but it really wasn't. It it wasn't that. I like being at home writing. Okay. So. And what does your writing process look like? I um, am definitely an outliner, okay. and. Um, uh, that to me is actually 
the most fun part of the process is outlining the story because I feel like that's where I'm the most creative okay. in coming up with stories and the characters and the setting and how to use it in different ways. So to me, that was the most fun part of it. And then um, the writing is fun, a little bit of a grind, you know, as a writer, you know, there's yes. some great days that I'm like, okay, you know, I cannot believe this was so easy. And then there are other days that you just stare at the screen and nothing yeah. comes. Yeah. So, um, so the outlining is the fun part for me, but okay. um, that's, that's the way. And I've got my second book is actually, I'm about halfway finished with the um, first draft of it now. So, the so this is a again, series? Series, yes. Okay. I pulled the detective out of this novel, Detective Jack Martin, and um, he goes from this murder mystery in Aspen to one in Vail next. So we're in Vail, Colorado in book two. And so, then, um, go ahead. Well, in the book three, we actually uh, spend a lot of time in Telluride, uh, our family, we have a home in Telluride, and that is actually book three, and I've got some really exciting ideas for that one there, so I'm saving that for the third one. Same detective? Same detective. Okay, mm -hmm. so this series, are they standalone books to the point where you don't need to read them in order, or, or do they connect in some way? They connect a little bit, but you could read them as standalones because the way that I've done it, the story's not so much about the detective. He's in the story, but there's this whole other story that he's just a little part of kind of helping solve the case. And so each one is similar to that. And um, it's very similar. There's a Ra um, Rachel Abbott is an author, a British author, who she writes a detective series. Um, she's in England and writes an English detective series, but it's the same way. And I thought it was real interesting. I didn't realize what I was doing until I heard an interview with her. And she said, oh no, my detective is in it, but there's always other protagonists in it. So he's just, yeah. and she thought that's why maybe her stories are fresh because the, the stories weren't around him, you know, every time. So, yeah. so I do, they're completely different stories that he's pulled in. So he's kind of a fun character to pull along. So does writing um, energize you or does it exhaust you? Or is it in kind of a mixture of both? Both. <laughs> you know, it's so funny. But even when it's exhausting, the times when, I mean, I can turn around and look at my husband and say, okay, today is a bear. This is so hard. When I finally get finished with it, because usually I have short chapters. I usually try to write a chapter a day and get okay. the the chapter done in one sitting doesn't always happen, but I really like to be able to do that. That's a great so when goal. I get that. Well, when I get that one done and it, especially if it's been hard and I feel like I've ended it on a really good little cliffhanger. I mean, that is just so exhilarating and yeah. so much fun. So, yeah. so yes, so, it is, it is, it's is hard, but, but it is very, <laughs> very fun. Okay. So you write every day or what is your process like in terms of scheduling? How do you schedule that? Or is it just when you feel it in the moment, you go and you write? Right. Well, now that I've been out as an author and I'm not keeping it a secret anymore, I do try to write every day, but life happens yeah. and it just, it doesn't work. So I do write more days than I don't, but That's it's right. definitely not, not every day. So and um, usually it, it's funny, afternoons work really good for me. I know a lot of people write first thing in the morning, but first thing in the morning, I kind of, I need a little while to get going. And um, so it's usually, usually in the afternoons that I do it. And then I may end, if it's a quick day, I'll end after just a couple hours. If it's taking me longer, that may go into the evening. I might write into the night. So is there that. anything that you find is your author kryptonite, things that just stop you? Uh, as far as reading or writing? Both. Well, um, probably as a reader, my biggest pet peeve is um, uh, head hopping. When um, an author has got different points of view in mm -hmm. the same chapter. You know, mm -hmm. we're hearing what one person's thinking and then all of a sudden we're hearing what somebody else is thinking. That's kind of, so I'm very cognizant of that when I'm writing. Okay. And um, uh, because that, that kind of does it for me. Now, as far as writing a pet peeve, it's probably this every once in a while, I know the chapter that I want to write and I know what I've got to get done. And I'm like, I have no, I have no clue. And yeah. so I can sit there and, and just try to figure out, okay, how can I get what I'm seeing on, onto the page? When did you decide 
that writing was the thing you wanted to do? When was it a book that you read? Was it a movie you saw? Was it what was it? Is it a specific author that just kind of sparked that in you? What made you decide writing? Because it's you know, not I, a career you go into for right. the night. You have to right, love no. It. <laughs> yeah, right. For sure. Um, you know, I've always written as a child, I wrote poetry. I'm sure it's very bad poetry. I have it. I'll have to pull it out of some time and reread it. <laughs> But I loved doing it and I loved reading. I've always read. So I've been a huge reader forever. And um, early on, because the first novel that I tried writing was probably 20 years ago. Wow. So uh, I just, I think having been a writer as a child, I mean, I was the editor of my high school newspaper, I majored in journalism in college. And then before I decided, you know, figured out, well, I'm not going to get a job. So I've got to figure out what else I'm going to do. And that's when I went into real estate family business. But, um, but so I've always been interested in it and always done it at, in some way, even when I went into business after uh, college, I was doing a lot of my own marketing. And so I was doing press releases and, you know, marketing brochures and things like that for the real estate development that I was doing. So, mm -hmm. so I've always written something, just always had it in the back of my mind that I wanted to write a novel. And then finally, like I said, about two years ago, I was like, now or never. So sat down and did it. And your family is supportive of this new path? Very, yes, very supportive. So that's, that's been awesome. fun too. It was a lot of fun having kept it a secret for so long when I finally could let that secret out. It was so fun. And now that the book is out, to actually have people talking about it and to be talking about these characters that I've had, you know, hidden away in my mind for, for a couple of years. So yeah. that's amazing. And you're that's a lot of fun. Has your husband read your book? Your kids read your book? He has, you know, even when I told him when I was writing it, he said, Oh, well, let me read it. And I was like, there is no way <laughs> you're reading this. I don't want any early criticism. I don't want yes. any suggestions. Yeah. So I told him, I said, there's going to be a hundred people to read this book before I let you read this book. And I did, I, I waited. He read it, he read it in the first week, but I did, I wouldn't let him be one of the first readers. So wow, that's funny. And, um, and he did, it was so funny. The first night that he was reading it, he um, took it in a sitting room that we have in Colorado. And he came back out a little while later, probably after he was about four or five chapters into it, I, I guess. And he was like, how did you know how to do this? <laughs> he was, so he's been great. He's been really great. That's awesome. So what was the hardest scene to write? You know, probably the hardest one was the one that I really like the best now. And it's okay. the one where um, it's the point of view of a different character. But uh, the detective, Jack Martin, who was a real enigma to me for a long time in the book. Um, and I knew I wanted to make it a series, so I knew, had, I, knew I had to figure out who he was. Um, it's showing him through the eyes of another character. Hmm. And it was so hard because I wasn't sure who he was. I was kind of finding out who he was with this character also. And that was the hardest scene to write. And now I look back and I've reread that um, chapter a couple different times. I'm like, it's still my favorite one. So it's funny how that turns out that really the one that gave me the biggest fit in writing the book was the one that I still like the best today. That's awesome. That's awesome. Do you have any advice for new writers? You know, that's funny. Being a new writer myself, I feel mm -hmm. I don't feel like I'm really in a huge position to, to be able to give advice. But I think the uh, biggest advice was, that I've read in other places and heard other authors say is just to read. Yeah. Because if you don't read and know what you like, um, you have to write what you like. Right. And so you've got to find out what you like then I think that will make you a better author and read a whole bunch in that genre because everybody writes it a little bit different. So you can, can see things going on, but there are two things that I used when I was um, writing the book and I've had them for several years, but uh, the first one is this book by Elizabeth George and it is called right away. And I'm a big outliner. And yeah. if you're an outliner, this book was invaluable to me, loved it. And I still go back to it on the second book. When I started, before I outlined my second book, went back and reread parts in my highlights and stuff that I had written in that one. And the other one is once I got the manuscript done, I went back and reread this one here as self-editing for fiction writers. I love that book. 
Love it. Yes. And um, I'm actually at a point in the manuscript on this second one that I might go back and reread it just to make sure I'm on track on a few things. This thing mm -hmm. has been indispensable also. Okay. And of course, I had the, I did have the book professionally edited also. And uh, I think that's very important if you're going to be an independent author yeah. and publish it yourself that you really, it behooves you to, to get it professionally edited. I completely agree. I think that is one of the most important things you can do as an author is to have somebody else who does it for a living edit your book. Right. Because we can read our manuscript over and over and over again, and we're going to read what it's supposed to say. Whether right. it says that or not, that's what we're going right. to see because we know what it's supposed to say. <laughs> right. So yeah, no, I think that's absolutely amazing advice. I think get an editor and, and don't design your covers necessarily on your own unless you're some, unless you're an artist because the cover right. is the first thing that buyers see. Exactly. So will you read the back of your book to us, the blurb? Absolutely. Oh, okay, yes. I might have to pull out my glasses, reading glasses. Go for it. I can't read. I can't see anything anymore. <laughs> okay. It says, Two murders, a terrified mountain resort. Can a daring reporter help stop an avalanche of bodies before she becomes the next victim? Uh, it says celebrity TV anchor Georgia Glass, once out of Denver and far away from her obsessed fan, set to host her own investigative crime show in LA, she's surprised to inherit a Victorian house in Aspen from a mysterious uncle she never knew. But while exploring the Gothic property, she discovers the frozen corpse of a missing heiress. Georgia's journalistic instincts kicks in and she's determined to help police track down the killer. But by investigating the murder, she has made herself the killer's next target. Can Georgia help solve the case before she becomes the next victim? Or will the stalker that followed her to Aspen get her first? That sounds awesome. That sounds it was awesome. Fun. It was a lot of fun. It was a lot of fun. Okay. And I have to say, very PG-13. A girlfriend of mine um, messaged me the other day and she said, I really, I haven't read your book yet. I'm going to read it, but I, can I give it to my 15-year-old goddaughter? And I said, absolutely. Very, very PG-13. I didn't want to write anything that I would be embarrassed for my kids to read or my 96-year-old yeah. grandmother to read. So. Okay. So young adult, new adult is good for this. Right. It's definitely adult novel, yeah. but um but I absolutely would let a teenage daughter read it too. Okay. There's no gratuitous violence, you know, sex, anything like that in it. So. Okay. So for those viewers out there, now that you have heard the description of the book, if you have not already, go ahead and click like so that you get entered into the drawing on December 11th to win an autographed copy of the book. All right. Is there anything in your writing process throughout the process of writing this book where your characters either just stopped giving you information or you found that you just didn't know where it was going to go next? I mean, I know that I outline a little. I'm a pantster outliner. When I outline, it never ends up ending the same way my right. outline says it is. And there are right. times where I'm just like, where are you taking me with this story? So have you, did you find right. any of those moments during oh, your writing absolutely. process? No, absolutely. Even when you outline, and I don't have big character sketches. I'll have little ideas of characters when I start out, but um, it always changes. Yeah. Or you think of something, you're like, oh, okay, you know, I'm going to add this in, or they, they just reveal themselves to you in the story. So a lot of times I'll think maybe they're going one way and then they end up a little bit different. So, but that's part of the fun of it too. Even yeah. having outlined it, a lot of people think, well, if you outline, then then you're that's stuck. the fun of it. You're, you're right, and not at all, not okay. at all. Outline is a living document, so we I uh, change agree. it as we go when we need to. Yep, completely agree. All right, let's talk a little bit about you as a reader. Who are your favorite authors, and do you have a favorite book that you just will read over and over again? I do. You know, and it's so funny. It's not a mystery book, but my all-time favorite novel is Lonesome Dove by Larry McMurtry. And um, I'm, I'm here in Texas. I'm actually an eighth-generation Texan. My family came when it was still Mexico. So we've been here forever. Okay. And um, a lot of the beginning of the story in Lonesome Dove is set near my hometown of Del Rio in West Texas. They actually filmed part of the movie out there. And um, it is, that 
that book was so broad and sweeping and the characters in it and everything was just fabulous. And I know a yeah. lot of people love the movie, but I have to say I read the book first. So I actually saw the movie. I was disappointed. So I'm not a huge fan of the movie and I'll probably get skewered by people, my friends from Del Rio who actually love it. But the book is just phenomenal. It's so just phenomenal. I watched the movie first or the mini series. It was set up like a mini series and I fell in love with the mini series. And then I read the book. And of course, the books are always better. Fabulous. I mean, when I are the books not better? I've, I've rarely read a book and watched the movie where I wasn't like, oh, I know. You missed so many good things. You feel like you're cheated a little bit. It's like, wait a yes. second, what about that scene with, you know, so-and-so? And yes. So I tend to, done. yes, I tend to prefer watching the movie first because I know I'll never be disappointed with the book. Right. But if I read the book first, and then watch the movie, I know there's a, a possibility I'm going to be disappointed. So I completely right. get that you like the book better and were disappointed in the movie. Having right. seen the movie first, I, I definitely loved it. Uh, and the, just the, the book, the book is phenomenal. It's a big one. And so yeah. it, I think it scares yeah. some people away. Yeah. It's, around, it's almost a thousand pages, I think. But, yeah. um, but it is really phenomenal. And I think being such a history nut too, and that I knew I could see some of the storylines that he had in that book, I was like, hey, wait a second, I just read that. I'll pull my book off the shelf. And I'm like, there it is, you yeah. know? So he pulled a lot from history, fictionalized, yeah. but it was just so close to what was really authentic. And so I just really, on many levels, enjoyed that book. But now if you ask me about mystery, I would have to say Agatha Christie's and then there were none is my favorite. So Okay. Very no. great book. I love Agatha Christie too. Yep. Who doesn't though? I mean, she's right. an icon. She's I, timeless. Yes. Timeless. Yes. I know it. So tell me a little bit about who inspired you. Did Agatha Christie, her books, did they inspire you to write? Definitely Agatha Christie and a lot when I decided that I was going to write a mystery because I knew that was a genre I'd loved to read. Yeah. Um, I read a bunch of different contemporary authors in the genre and realized that I probably resembled most in what I liked to write and um, writing style maybe uh, to uh, Mary Higgins Clark. So then I was like, okay, I narrowed it down to her and then I went on a mission and I read dozens of her books yeah. uh, just to kind of see, you know, what are the kind of stories that people like, what, you know, what, what keeps bringing her readers back for the next yeah. book and the next. And unfortunately she passed away this last year. I just got her very last book in the mail day before yesterday. So that was a little heartbreaking, mm -hmm. um, but she's definitely was huge inspiration. Plus she was just a wonderful lady. I've seen lots of interviews with her and stuff and she was just nice friendly. So is there anything about you that we haven't talked about that you'd like my viewers to know or your potential readers to know? Because we hope that they all jump aboard and yes. order a copy of your book. So is there anything you want them to know about you? You know, so there's a, nothing that exciting other, you know, I have three kids and wife and um, that uh, real estate in my previous life, which a lot of my friends don't even realize that I just kind of went off and worked during the day. So they were kind of surprised to find that out when that was on the back, the jacket of the book. And i um, not sure what they thought I was doing. But, um, but other than that, no, we um, spend a lot of our time in Colorado. And that's why I was interested in uh, when I knew I wanted to write a mystery, I thought, okay, well, what's going to be a good setting that hasn't been overdone? Because Mary Higgins Clark sets a lot of hers in New York and New, uh, New Jersey, where she's from, was from. And uh, so immediately it didn't take any time before I zeroed in on the Rocky Mountains. And it was just, you know, the mountains are mysterious and there's lots of secrets and old stories yeah. and stuff. So it was a perfect setting for a mystery. And we do spend several months a year there. And um, so that, that was, that was fun. So okay. that's, that's probably about as exciting as it gets. Okay. I'm pretty much a whole body. <laughs> oh, well, nowadays we all kind of are. Yes. So yes, you know. I know it is easier these days for people like me who are a little more introverted yeah. and homebody. So yeah, definitely. Okay, so I like to end all of my author interviews with the famous James Lipton questionnaire. It's 10 questions. Just, there's no wrong answers. Just 
answer whatever comes to the top of your mind. Okay, you don't have to think too hard on this one, okay? Okay. What is your favorite word? Love. What is your least favorite word? Hate. What turns you on? Candy. Is that bad? <laughs> no, that's not bad. <laughs> what turns you Sorry. on? Um, mean people, snobby mm -hmm. people. Okay. What sound or noise do you love? My children, when they come home and the house is full of noise again. Yes. What sound or noise do you hate? Um, probably sirens, because when you're a mother, you know, siren goes off somewhere. You're wondering, okay, where are my, where are my, my yes. people again? Yes. So sirens, I don't like that. Somebody's in trouble. What is your favorite curse word? Oh, am I allowed to say it on yeah. here? Probably crap. Okay. <laughs> See, I feel funny even saying it, but I, You're that's so usually proper that's, when you say it. <laughs> well, that's my that's my go to. I think if something goes wrong. So okay. anyway, uh, apologize what? to my ninety six year old grandmother if she listens to this. It'll be fine, Grandma. Okay. What profession other than your own would you like to attempt? Wow. You know, a dream that I always had that I was too chicken to ever do was mountaineering. And now luckily I'm too old for that. So <laughs> we do do, do we do a lot of hiking in Colorado, but I would have loved, I have a girlfriend who went to base camp at Everest and I'm just in awe. I would have loved to have just even done that. So maybe I can do that one day. That's really loved, cool. I would have loved mountaineering. Uh, what profession would you not like to do? Oh, in the medical field, anything. Mm. I just admire people in the health field so much. And I'm always saying how grateful I am that there are people that love to do that and want to do that because yeah. that would be something I couldn't do. Yeah. No. Okay. Last question. If heaven exists, what would you like to hear God say when you arrive at the pearly gates? Welcome. I was expecting you and here are all of your loved ones who came before you. I love that. That's wonderful. I love that. I do. We've got some good ones there waiting. So, yeah. All right. Well, that is the end of my interview. Thank you so much for taking time out of your day to do oh, this, this with me. This was so much fun. Thank you. Yes. It was such an honor being a first-time author, too, being asked to be on here. I really appreciate it. I had a lot of fun. Oh, I'm glad. I'm glad. Well, I'm going to post all of her social media links and obviously a link to purchase a copy of and now i see you down in the description below but if you want a chance to win a free copy make sure you click like on this video oh, beautiful beautiful cover now i see you by none other than shannon work so make sure you either get a copy or you click like so you can get a chance to win all right. Bye, everybody. Have a great day.